We've already reviewed both of Apple's new tablets, but which one should you buy? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is the iPad Mini with Retina Display versus the iPad Air. Last month, Apple took the stage to unveil all its latest products. Among the new releases were two brand new iPads, the iPad Air and iPad Mini with Retina Display. We have now successfully reviewed both models and compared them extensively, but we have yet to compare them to one another. Which is the better offer? Should you get the full-sized iPad Air or scaled down Mini this holiday season? Let's take a closer look. Last year's full-sized 4th generation iPad and iPad Mini had their fair share of differences, both internally and externally. This year, Apple brought uniformity to the iPad lineup, consolidating the design and internals. The iPad Mini with Retina Display, for all intents and purposes, looks exactly like the original iPad Mini. The only external differences are slight discrepancies in thickness, weight, and the addition of a microphone on the backside near the top edge on the new Mini. The iPad Air underwent quite a few changes, however. It now features the exact same design as the iPad Mini, only on a larger scale. The edges are rounded, not tapered. The speakers are separated by the lightning port along the bottom edge, not a single rear-facing speaker on the lower left corner. And the front trim has the same chamfered edge. The iPad Mini with Retina Display and iPad Air are clearly very closely related. Since the major difference externally is size, how much disparity is there between the two? The iPad Air is 40mm taller, 34.8mm wider, and it's 138 grams more than the iPad Mini with Retina Display. Both, surprisingly, are 7.5mm thick. The insides of these two tablets is much of the same story. Both come with 1GB of RAM, 5MP rear cameras, 1.2MP front cameras, and the same storage capacity options, 16, 32, 64, and 128GB. Both have A7 chips inside as well. The only notable difference is the battery ratings. The Air has a 32.4 watt hour battery while the iPad Mini has a 23.8 watt hour cell. Both come with retina displays with pixel resolutions of 2048 by 1536 pixels. At 7.9 inches, the iPad Mini retina display has a notably higher density of 324 pixels per inch compared to 264 ppi on the 9.7 inch iPad Air. That increased density comes at a cost, however. The iPad Air's display is incredible. Color gamut, contrast, black levels, and brightness are fantastic. Simply put, it's one of the best tablet displays out there. The iPad Mini's display isn't bad by any means, despite what you've heard. Its saturation, unfortunately, isn't nearly as high as the Air's. Is the difference noticeable? Yes, if you're looking for it. And it's one of those things that's sort of difficult to unsee. But we feel the reports that the iPad Mini's display appears washed out and substandard are a tad sensationalist. Yes, it's obviously less saturated than the full-size iPad Air, but if Apple had to make a choice between clarity and color reproduction, it made the right decision. To say one of these tablets is better than the other, at least in terms of hardware, is a bit silly. One has a larger display, the other is much smaller and lighter, and those sort of things appeal to different buyers and users. More on that in a bit. We'll save you the discussion of the software in this video. Both tablets are currently running the same exact versions of software, iOS 7, version 7.0.4. There are literally no differences in the software. For a more detailed look at iOS 7 and what it has to offer, check out our iOS 7 walkthrough video, linked below. The A7 chipset in the iPad Air and iPad Mini is a monster at performance, and despite the minor difference in clock speed, performance is virtually indistinguishable between these two tablets. Both open applications in the blink of an eye. Task switching is snappy, pinch zooming within the browser is effortless and blazing fast. In our time with both tablets, we have yet to truly bog down the A7 chip, and performance is stellar on both tablets. The only hint of a boost, thanks to the 100 MHz faster clock speed of the iPad Air, is found when benchmarking. The iPad Air scores marginally better than the Mini in various tests, such as the SunSpider JavaScript test, where the Air typically scores between 370 and 395 milliseconds, and the new iPad Mini generally scores just over 400. We'd be surprised if this were enough to sway anyone toward the Air. It's negligible at best. Both are great for gaming, multimedia playback, and even much simpler tasks. The speakers inside the iPad Air are ever so slightly larger than those found inside the iPad Mini with the Retina Display. As such, they provide a little more kick in the form of both more full sound, with more emphasis on the low end, and more volume. Being larger, it's also more difficult to fully cover the speakers on accident. But let us be very clear here. We're not happy with the placement on either tablet. The stereo separation is practically non-existent. 
and the sound is only ever coming from one side of the tablet. Though the audio isn't bad, we recommend using headphones when possible. Both tablets are rated at 10 hours of usage, and despite the significant difference in battery size, they both seem to withstand a fair amount of abuse before begging to be plugged in. The iPad Mini's battery, at 23.8 watt hours, is much smaller, but so is the display. The full-sized iPad has an edge in this category, but only just. Both provide above average stamina, typically lasting upwards of a full day and even sometimes stretching three or four days on lighter usage. Camera quality is neck and neck between these two tablets. The 5 megapixel shooters aren't the best. Both would leave you with dull, poorly saturated images with low contrast and detail. They're both comparable in basically every way except one, comfort. The iPad mini is far less awkward to hold and shoot stills and video with, but it still looks just as ridiculous. At the end of the day, there are truly only a few things between these two tablets. Size, weight, display quality, and price. If you're even remotely worried about the display quality, shoot for the iPad Air, though we're certain most will have few, if any, complaints about the iPad mini's retina display. As for price, the iPad mini with retina display starts at $399, jumping $100 per increase in storage. The iPad Air is $100 more per model. If you want more storage for less money, the iPad mini is the way to go. After having used every iPad to date, we can leave you with one major takeaway. The iPad mini is an ultra-portable tablet, something you won't notice in your bag, one you won't mind carrying with you often. The iPad Air is larger, slightly heavier, and is, in our experience at least, more suitable for a couch tablet, something you use at home or for more productivity-based tasks. There's virtually nothing between these two, but at the end of the day, for us, it's the iPad mini with retina display. For having the same power, similar performance and stamina, and a great display, all for $100 less than the iPad Air. That's going to do it for this comparison. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to click the thumbs up button below and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this one in the future. Be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and follow us in all the usual places, Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at PocketNow. I'm Taylor Martin, you can find me on Twitter at CasperTech, and I will see you next time.